Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and we're gonna talk about Schrodinger's fandom. Yeah, that's what I like to call Schrodinger's fandom, where the fandom is both a vocal minority and an angry mob that single-handedly tanks a movie or a TV show or a comic book or, or game or whatever. Uh, it seems like Hollywood, it seems like publishers, seems like game developers can't decide if the fandom is insignificant or responsible for every bad thing that ever happens. But we're going to talk about that in regards to Terminator Dark Fate which was a massive bomb at the box office last year. And uh, director Tim Miller is blaming the uh, get woke and go broke sentiment for Terminator Dark Fate, but he's also praising the fans because he's a producer on the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. So which is it, Tim? I have no idea. We're going to talk about that. Please subscribe for more pop culture, news views, and rants. We're at almost 100,000 subs. Thank you for the support so far, guys. It's been amazing. Uh... Definitely. All right, this article is coming from Bounding Into Comics. Director Tim Miller blames Get Woke and Go Broke sentiment for Terminator Dark Fate's box office bomb. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with what Get Woke and Go Broke means, is basically when a franchise decides it's going to go all in on very far left politics or become a platform for political activism, Usually it drives away a good chunk of the audience and it loses money. We've seen this time and time and time again with a lot of different franchises, not just Terminator, but we've seen it with uh, entire companies, uh, you know, going out of business because their business model isn't sustainable because they decided it was more important to get political uh, than it was to create a product for everyone that made money. Or they chose to alienate their existing fans to chase what a lot of people call a phantom audience, a non-existent audience of people who uh, proclaim very loudly on places like Twitter and Tumblr that they want certain things in entertainment, but they don't actually buy anything. They don't actually turn up to support movies or or whatever it is. They just like to to offer up their hot takes on social media, but they're not actually buying the comic books. They're not actually buying the games. Uh, they're not buying the action figures or going to the movies, a lot of them. But Hollywood and publishers, uh, game developers have made the mistake of uh, courting these people, thinking that they would become customers. And most of the time, they, they don't. They don't. Uh, and what happens is when directors, you know, loudly proclaim that their movie is going to be quote unquote woke, uh, a lot of times the audience just doesn't turn out to support it. And Tim Miller is blaming, blaming fans, blaming fans again. Get Woke and Go Broke ruined his movie, but it also saved Sonic. So go figure. Terminator Dark Fate director Tim Miller blamed the Get Woke and Go Broke sentiment for the film bombing at the box office. During a recent episode of the Business with Kim Masters podcast, the host shared Miller's analysis on the box office failure of Dark Fate as well as audience reaction to the film. Not only does Miller share his analysis on the film, but he and Masters go back and forth about Miller's reaction to fans compared to Sonic the Hedgehog director Jeff Fowler. The conversation took place before the release of Sonic the Hedgehog. Masters' discussion with Miller begins around the 940 mark. I'm going to link to this article. You can go out and check it out. Listen to this for yourself. The clip begins with Miller saying there was a lot of get woke and go broke sentiment that didn't help us, but... Well, he came right out and said, men, stay home. Men, stay home. This movie's not for you. Misogynists are going to be uh, terrified, terrified of the female Terminator. When asked to explain what that means, Miller responds, there was a lot of issues about having three women in lead positions and all of that stuff. No, no, that wasn't really the issue. Sarah Connor has been a kick-ass female action hero since the 1980s. That wasn't the issue. It was, again, it was telling men to stay home. Uh, making a point of killing off John Connor. Spoiler, uh, in a, a, a stupid, stupid way. Undoing Terminator 2. That's what the issue was for most people. He adds, there's quite a toxic atmosphere around this film online, which I was really surprised at. It shouldn't be. I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be. But I was. Well, dude, you caused some of it. You caused some of it. Uh, Tim Miller. We'll, we'll talk about that. Masters then posits the idea that fans are lying in wait to pounce on directors and creatives because they know what they don't want. Miller agrees with this assertion saying, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I think it is a small minority, 
but it's a very vocal minority and they make a lot of noise and it's hard, you know? I don't dwell online on the negativity, but it's human nature to read a little bit. Okay, if it's a small minority of people complaining, why was Terminator such a bomb? I mean, clearly, clear, again, Schrodinger's fandom, they don't really matter. There's just a, a very small, uh, small percentage of people complaining online, but damn it, they tanked my movie. A small number of people online, a small number of fans complaining shouldn't have the ability to tank a movie franchise. But somehow they do. Because you know what? There are a hell of a lot more people who aren't on board with the constant political messaging from Hollywood than Hollywood wants to admit. That's what the problem is. Hollywood has put the blinders on. They don't realize that, you know, in their, their little bubble down in SoCal, uh, they don't realize that their little bubble does not, uh, does not account for, and the political beliefs of the people in that bubble does not account for the vast majority of the country. So when you broadcast your message, you might get fist bumps and high fives and, and, uh, you know, from your peers in person and likes and retweets and all kinds of, uh, clapbacks on Twitter, but your, your, uh, loud proclamation of your political beliefs using established IP to push political beliefs, uh, will probably land with a thud at the box office or at the comic book shop, you know, the video game store, wherever it is, you know, uh, people, people are taking note of who is using, using fandom as a platform for politics and they don't want anything to do with it. Terminator, Terminator Dark Fate should have been a slam dunk. You've got Linda Hamilton back. You've got Arnold Schwarzenegger back. You've got James Cameron involved. It should have been a slam dunk, but Tim Miller shooting his mouth off about politics months before the movie came out definitely chilled any excitement people had for this movie. And it showed at the box office. Miller does add he believes there's value to finding out what people are thinking. He says, I do feel that there is some value to this perspective. You know, there's some insight into what people are thinking you can't. Miller also admits that he knows some of the things he did with Terminator Dark Fate would be controversial. We did some stuff I knew would be controversial. Yeah, how they handled how they handled John Connor. Incredibly controversial. Basically, how it came across to fans was, uh, screw the male lead, let's kill him off and introduce, you know, audiences to a whole bunch of new female characters. And uh, that's that's what they didn't like. Now, whether or not the movie was actually like that, it really didn't matter because Tim Miller loudly had told people that this movie was going to make misogynists very, very afraid. And you know what? People took that to mean it was going to be anti-male. They didn't go. They didn't go. You know, meanwhile, you've got a movie like Wonder Woman that you just put the movie out there and she's a strong female character and it's directed by a woman and nobody felt the need to run men down and men came and supported Wonder Woman too. You know, I mean, these directors, these actors, these comic book creators, they're their own worst enemies, right? They're their own worst enemies. Uh, then he talks about Sonic the Hedgehog. He is a producer on Sonic. Uh, he said he was a producer on the film. There were multiple producers. He details that he helped director Jeff Fowler with the crew, noting that like Deadpool, they filmed in Vancouver. So he had a lot of the Deadpool crew join in. Um, he discussed the fan reaction Fowler received to the original design of Sonic. It was a tactical error on the design of Sonic, to be sure, but Jeff took ownership of it uh, right away and said, look, we hear you and we're going to fix it. And they did. The new design, the new trailer came out, and generally speaking, everybody's you know, positive. Miller notes that he believes the new trailer and new design would overcome the first design, and it did, because Sonic's made over $200 million worldwide, without China, without Japan. Schrodinger's fandom. Here we go. He then credits Fowler for listening to the fans. We, we both... Blame the fans and listen to the fans. You know, ideally, the fans believe and think what we believe and think. And when they don't, we'll demonize them, right? Uh, he then credits Fowler for listening to the fans. I think rightly so, he gets credit for listening. Well, at least somebody did, Tim. Fans like to be heard. If you're going to scream, the best thing that can happen is someone listens to you. Wait a second, Tim. You just got done saying fans like to be heard. The whole thought process behind get woke and go broke is that fans are telling you what they want and what they don't want with their money. When somebody goes broke because they got woke, 
it's because they went too hard on politics they you know uh damaged an existing franchise or they used pop culture to lecture people they didn't like it uh it's a free market right i know i know there are a lot of people out there who don't like capitalism and don't like the free market but it's a free market so people withhold their money and they go broke this is what's happening now because you know what fans are very tired of the bullshit going on in different fandoms that it's being used as a battleground when it used to be a place to escape you know, I put this tweet up the other day. It got a lot of uh, got a lot of action. I didn't expect it to get that much, but I, I said, and this is entirely true. Uh, there are a lot of fake fans who worm their way in the fandoms, fan journalism, and the entertainment industry with the sole intention of commandeering platforms to use for activism, for pushing their OCs or other nefarious purposes. A lot of times, it's just to build their own platform, their own brand. Uh, fandom does welcome everyone except posers. You know, fans are tired. They're tired of their franchises their entertainment their escapism being used to push politics if and they can smell the bullshit from miles away you know birds of prey might have been a fine movie it might have been a fine movie I've, I've heard people whose opinions i trust about birds of prey say that it actually wasn't that bad of a movie but because of the marketing because the people behind the movie and the media decided to spout out uh, misogyny and politics and empowerment yada 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 they alienated a a large portion of their potential audience you know and that's what happened with terminator too tim you actually you actually tanked terminator by shooting your mouth off uh i'm, I'm i hope you're happy what miller leaves out of the conversation is that he took issue with fan reaction following the release of the poster of the film this is what he said yeah this is right um, if you're at all enlightened, she'll play like gangbusters. If you're a closet misogynist, she'll scare the F out of you because she's tough and strong, but very feminine. Uh, Miller indicates this in a recent interview with Kim Masters that there's some value to listening to fans, but he doubled down his criticism of fans, calling them toxic. So which is it? Again, Schrodinger's fandom. I guess you're great as long as you love everything Hollywood does and you give them your money and you don't ask questions. But if you ask questions, you're terrible. You know, it's just, it's such bullshit. So thankfully, Tim Miller was not the director of Sonic. Uh, if he was, I think it would have been a totally different, uh, totally different experience. But um, fans can't do anything right these days. We can't do anything right. You want our money. To a lot of people in Hollywood, fandom is just an ATM machine. And this is the problem. This is why these studios, and these game developers, and these comic book publishers are going broke as simple as that it really is as simple as that people don't want to be viewed as an atm machine to bankroll your political grandstanding i mean seriously it's not hard to figure out hollywood it really isn't hard to figure out so please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants we'll be back later hey guys thanks for watching clownfish tv please consider supporting the channel go to clownfishsupport.com that's clownfishsupport.com and if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.